probably going to regret asking this, but is a rolling pin run something you would all be interested in, be it in Fallout 4, 3 or New Vegas? Please let me know. When I asked that question, I was expecting maybe a handful of replies about whether people wanted to see me doing a rolling pin run or not on one of the fallouts. I did not expect for it to take over the entire comment section of that video. I suppose it wouldn't be wise to keep you all waiting, so today we will ask the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with a rolling pin? I chose New Vegas over 3 and 4 because, from skimming through the comments of that video, it's what everyone wanted to see the most. Honestly, I'm more than okay with that, as it's probably the easiest of the three games to attempt the run in, given how incredible some of the melee perks are in New Vegas. <coughs> I will definitely get to this run in Fallout 3 and 4 though, don't worry. I think it'll be fun after doing all three to figure out which one was the most difficult and why. The rules are as simplistic as any other weapon restricted run. In combat, the only weapon I can fight back with is the rolling pin. And that's it. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. For, I believe, the first time ever in a video, I decided to play as a female courier. Doesn't really bother me which gender I go with as it doesn't change anything outside of a few lines of dialogue. However, an overwhelming amount of you suggested that the run be done as an old woman, or more specifically, a grandma, so here you are. This is Grandma Rolly, aptly named as she is going to show the Mojave the destructive power of the pin as she rolls over the entire wasteland with ease. My special stats are just as they are for any average melee build who also wants to have some skill points to spend later. In retrospect, I did not need to put that many points in the luck as I never once gambled in the entire run, plus the critical damage of the rolling pin made so little difference that it was never ever even noticeable during combat. For my tag skills, it was melee weapons, medicine, and science. Melee weapons, to not make this a pointless endeavour, medicine for slightly more beneficial stim packs, and three skill checks with the injured boomers later, and finally science for terminal hacking and fixing up a specific robot for way too much experience in the very early game. Finally for traits, I just went with skilled and wild wasteland. Skilled because it's the best, and wild wasteland because you should know why given the context of the run. Again, I probably could have benefited from heavy handed seeing how crit damage was borderline useless, but oh well. Being free from the shackles of the doc's tutorial, I grab anything even remotely useful from around his house and head off to find my instrument of death. I check in with Chet, but as expected, he never has the one weapon you want when you really need it the most. Not to worry, I know of at least two guaranteed spawn locations for the rolling pin, so I begin making my way to the first one, which is all the way over in Cliff Briscoe's house in Novak. I just ran the intended path out of Good Springs through Prim and Nipton, stopping along the way to mark convenient locations on the map for later, such as the Mojave Outpost. I also stopped off at Wolfhorn Ranch because, for me anyway, almost every single time I come here there's a set of reinforced leather armour inside, and wouldn't you know it, today was no different. This is pretty great armour for the very beginning of the playthrough, so already having access to it should make my life just a little bit easier. From here I say hello to some legion troops who thankfully don't crucify me like a Korok, and before you know it, I'm saying hello to Reptar and arriving in Novak. Cliff's rarely in his house and also leaves the door unlocked, so I have no trouble getting inside. I test out the weapon's primary function before stealing it, and now we can get this run underway. As of right now it is in a terrible condition, and as a result, only does 4 damage per swing. I have a couple of weapon repair kits so I can use it for now, and just pop those whenever it's about to break. I could have travelled to the Mojave Outpost for full repairs before using it, but I was far too curious and needed to see what I was working with. To that end, the jackals at the highway patrol station were my first set of guinea pigs. As you can see, it is not the greatest. Against an unarmoured opponent, I'm sure it will be better, but against these two jackals in leather armour? Well, I am swinging for quite some time before I can even end the fight. Not helping matters is that the rolling pin is a slower than average weapon, meaning it doesn't even have a high DPS rating either. On the bright side, the reinforced leather armour helps to keep me alive long enough while the jackals stab me back. I'm able to come out on top in the end, but it is very clear that I need a few more levels under my belt and perks in my system before I even thought about attempting some tougher encounters. Speaking of levels, for the time, every point is going into melee weapons, followed by unarmed, speech and then repair. All of these skills, with the exception of speech, will allow me to access perks that will be damn near essential if I want to turn this thing into a somewhat usable weapon. Speech is literally just so I can talk the leg into a 1v1 at the end of the game. I think I can take him with enough pre-planning, but him plus all of his men at the same time seems like a bit of an impossibility. 
I tell tales of the Legion's human bonfire to the NCR, which levels me up, and for my first perk, I take Black Widow. 10% extra damage against male opponents is a very good perk to have, considering a good 80% of everything I will fight in the story is a man. When I make it to Major Knight, I am very relieved to see that the rolling pin is laughably cheap to repair. From its current condition to max, it only costs me 18 caps. This means money can be spent on more important things like healing supplies, drugs, and potentially cybernetic implants to make me the best grandmother in the post-apocalypse. Anyway, while I'm here, I agree to help out Jackson, and just as I'm about to head out, I am accosted by none other than Malcolm Holmes. I was ready to bash his brains in the instant the dialogue ended, but to my surprise, he was one step ahead today and decided to dip from reality the instant his information had been passed on. I choose to ignore his sorcery for the time and just get on with making ant pies. The ants on the highway are big and stupid enough that I can easily circle them while swinging away and they are powerless to stop me due to how slow they turn. They also don't have a lot of health, so beating them into a squishy pulp takes no time at all. Once the deed is done, I repair my equipment and level up once more. Just know that after every single combat encounter, I am travelling back to the Mojave Outpost for repairs. Not only is the weapon weak, but its durability is a point of concern too. Considering its cheap repair cost, this isn't an issue. Just thought I would mention it as I don't plan on showing every single trip back to the outpost to avoid repeating myself. With a lack of direction and still very much concerned about my damage output, I start doing quests backwards from the intended order. Or in other words, I hit up the hotel to see about rescuing Beagle. The convicts can barely take a hit at the best of times, so the rolling pin isn't all that terrible against them, which is nice to see. I also had some help from their trigger-happy leader, who seemed more interested in disintegrating his own men rather than fighting me. Once Beagle is rescued, I can immediately put the NCR in charge of the town, due to having already helped out Jackson at the outpost beforehand. I could have very easily reprogrammed Prim Slim into the second slowest killing machine in the wastes, but I wanted some good boy points with the NCR, and this is an easy way to do it. Keeping up with the trend of doing things in reverse order, I also helped Ringo deal with the weaker convicts coming after him in Good Springs. Not much to say here, the oddly bloodthirsty townsfolk do most of the work. I'm just here to do the talking and the occasional bonking. On my way to Sloan, I had my first encounter where I bit off a bit more than I could chew. This is because I attempted to fight a rad scorpion. The normal massive scorpions aren't actually an issue. With some patience, I probably could have won the fight. It was when he brought in his older brother that the situation became dire. I attempted to fight back, but it was very clear I was not going to win this fight as I couldn't outmaneuver him like I did with the ants. That meant it was time for a tactical retreat. Thankfully, the game system saved me as the rat scorpion seemed to not be allowed inside the boundaries of Sloan, so I am at the very least safe for now. I fix up Snuffles in the generator, take my payment, and then get to extracting my somewhat revenge as I batter the bark scorpions in and around Hidden Valley. Feeling somewhat more confident in my little rolling pin, I began to test out in some of the centaurs near Black Mountain, evolved and otherwise. Good to know, it actually dispatches them quite easily. They offer more experience than everything else I fought up to this point, so it is very welcome. If need be, I can come back here to grind later if I'm ever in a pinch. For now, I just grab the holotape and valuables, that means everything, from the nearby Brotherhood soldiers, and then make my way up the back of Black Mountain right after the game's filter changes. Like most grandmothers, Rolly can face through solid objects, allowing her to re-emerge on the inside of this building, and from there, safely make her way over to the storage room containing Rhonda. The 900 XP I gain for this simple task pushes me to level 6, and I take the toughness perk. Defense is just as, if not more important than my offense today, so this feels like a very worthwhile perk to have. Being hungry for more experience, I returned to Novak and agreed to help out both the snipers with their respective dilemmas. First off was Boone, who might help to keep his skills from getting rusty. I won't be taking him along for the journey, mind you, but his quest is short and sweet, so I may as well get it out of the way. As for Manny, well, he wants me to deal with the ghouls at the rap contest site by any means necessary. The normal ferals are easily dealt with as long as I make sure to block their incoming attacks, as I'm not quite a tank just yet. The glowing ones can be a little bit more troublesome, especially when they attack with a pack of normal ferals. Like any good raid boss though, I just make sure to deal with his minions first so that all of my attention can be focused on him. Once it's just the two of us, I mainly just whittle him down with two swings, followed by a block, and then repeat until he stops making noises. Murdering all of the sentient ghouls inside was something I had considered for a moment, but I figured I hadn't done this quest in quite a while, plus this would technically be worth more XP in the long run. The ghoul nightlight wishes me to take care of the nightkin in the basement, which... Eh, it seems like it would be a rather difficult task all things considered, so I decided to play nice with them instead. 
I don't have to pass any skill checks either, I simply just talk with our leader Davison for a minute, and then agree to help him find the shipment of stealth boys he's trying to locate. This leads us next door to Harland, who also has a task for us to find a friend of his before he will let us search the room. Well, I don't really feel like coming into contact with the more hostile Nightkin further in, so I say nuts to that, and just start attacking him. He isn't fully allied with the ghouls upstairs, therefore killing him in cold blood doesn't immediately make them hostile or fail the quest. Good thing too is I feel like the rolling pin shaped bruises all over his body would be rather easy to pin on me. Using a terminal in the room confirms that the shipment of stealth boys isn't at the test site, so I show Davison the information, and he accepts what I tell him, and then just leaves with the rest of the Nightkin. I return to Jason to tell him he can now fire his friends out of rockets into the unknown, and he is ecstatic to get started. The final part of this is honestly just a fetch quest that requires me to steal toy rockets from the dinosaur Novak, as well as dish out 500 caps to old lady Gibson to get the final parts required for space flight. They're not actually going to space, but I like to pretend. I like to pretend so much so that I took the space suit to fulfill my needs. The set is actually better than my reinforced leather, so wearing it is both practical and hilarious. Despite the shocking number of bodies already left in her wake, Grandma Rolly is a kind soul at heart, and as such she readjusts the flight path of the rockets to send the zombies closer to their destination and further away from me. With the quest complete, I now began heading for Boulder City. However, along the way, I stopped off to teach the fire ants at the dry lake a lesson. All of this exterminator XP combined with playing ghoul NASA advisor has already got me to level 8, allowing me to take the super slam perk. Due to the rolling pin's slow attack speed, the perk doesn't activate as much as it would for other melee weapons, but when it does, it's still just as helpful as ever. In fact, it comes into effect right away as I confront Jessup in Boulder City. Despite what I just said, the perk takes effect multiple times during the encounter, and as expected, makes my life so, so much easier. It's honestly his friend, or really any other melee opponent that causes me trouble from here. As, while you can knock them down through a block, doing so causes their block to still be in effect the entire time, meaning you cannot combo your swings together and instead bounce back after each hit. That's not really an issue we have to worry about for the time, so before long, Boulder City is saved, the cans more than likely hit my guts, and I can start heading towards Vegas to confront Benny, as well as some other tasks that I had in mind. The trip there was rather boring. I did stop into the Repcon headquarters, however, to grab the second Brotherhood holotape for later. On my way out, New Vegas crashed, the sky is blue, the grass is green, and I still hate the Omertas with every fibre of my being. When arriving in Freeside, I take the time to get to know some of the locals just a little bit better, but let's be real, we all know there is something I need to do. Making my way to the Atomic Wrangler, I get to work being a pimp for the Garrets by agreeing to find them three different escorts. Two of them don't matter. What we want is Fisto. The old Cerulean robotics lab is only filled with giant rats, so in no scenario in the world should these creatures ever kill you. If they do, just turn the game off right away. Once the rats are out of the picture, we can use our science skill to free and program Fisto, and then, like the other grandmas in the game, test him out. After that pummeling of a lifetime, we step foot outside to find three more elderly women about to beat us up with their own rolling pins. Unfortunately for them, I am the rolling pin master by now, and can easily deal with three of them. It could also be down to the fact that I'm wearing armour worth a damn, but shh. It's not long before the ladies are getting intimate with the sidewalk, allowing me to reap the spoils of war. To make a fine addition to my collection. I now have three, count them, three rolling pins. This doesn't change much in the grand scheme of things, it just means I won't have to waste as much time running back to Major Knight after every single fight, but now after every three fights. Well, I think I'm about as prepared as I can be, so it was time to head for the tops. Having followed the main quest up until this point, I have more than enough evidence to convince Swank to hand me back my baking utensils, as well as having the guards turn a blind eye to my misdeeds. Rather than let Swank send Benny to his room after meeting Yes Man, I instead do it myself by making use of the Black Widow perk. Now, you can sleep with Benny and kill him that way, but sadly the screen goes black and therefore there's no way to tell if I bludgeon him to death with the rolling pin afterwards. So, rather, once we have him right where we want him, we just begin the fight as normal. Well, fight is a very strong word. Not only did I disarm him with the very first strike, but I also activated the Super Slam perk over and over again. Not once was Benny able to stand up and fight back, as I just unleashed my onslaught upon him. I was certainly expecting more of a fight, but you know what, I'll take it. Makes things far less complicated for me, and that's how we like it. I took this time to do a few of the quicker side quests for the same reason as usual, money and XP. 
This consisted of talent pools, I'd already bitten to all the locations with the axe, so all it required was a bit of fast travelling around to get them to sign up, and then I also did the rest of the quests for the Garrets as I played Debt Collector and One Time Assassin on the Strip, so that I may forcibly take a man's cowboy hat. I also had a career as a security guard, but after letting in perhaps the wrong customer, Laugh and grow fat. my career was cut short. If you're curious, Simon suffered a similar fate to Benny, making the encounter another joke. On the bright side, the Van Graaff's guard armour is better than my spacesuit, so hooray for more protection. I'm still not taking off the helmet though. Considering I haven't mentioned it yet, Mr House is my ending of choice today. I haven't even interacted with the man the Lucky 38 yet, simply because I plan to just complete all of his quests before doing so, as to cut down on the back and forth. First up were the boomers, and it's about the same as usual. I run in, avoid the bombs, heal up the patients by smoothing out their injuries with a pin, listen to the kid run his mouth, beat up some more ants, and fix Jack's love life. I don't have the repair skill required to fix the solar panels for Loyal right now, but not to worry, as I soon levelled up, and I did it after everything else. The most enjoyment I got out of this questline today was when I approached this lay clerk and was ready for a tough fight, only for things to go completely my way as I proceeded to bully the absolute hell out of him. His nearby friend didn't fare much better. If they like the water so much, then they should stay there. After I'm done playing with the crabs, I strap the armbands to the ship and wrap up my task with the boomers. Before heading off to the fort for my next objective, I procured the final holotape I would need for the Brotherhood. You only need one to make it inside the base early, but you will see why I grabbed all three soon enough. A few ghouls are all that stand between me and the fort, so nothing worth going over in great detail. I go along with what Mr Milan is telling me because attempting to fight him and his guards with a rolling pin didn't seem like the best idea. House is surprised to see me when I reach the bunker, considering how much I've already accomplished, and the fact that I left him on red when I came to the invitation to the Lucky 38. Something I forgot to mention, during my time with the boomers, once I finished all of the requests, I reached level 12 and was able to take the piercing strike perk so that the rolling pin can now ignore 15 points of a target's damage threshold. Meaning I am now able to stand a much better chance against armoured enemies. For example, the protectrons and turrets down in the bunker can barely take a few hits with the pin before going down. The turrets can still pack quite a punch, so to circumvent that I just walk from side to side while smacking them to avoid most of their lasers. I ignore the three in the control room though, no reason to stop and fight them, I'm just here to activate the army and leave. I inform Caesar of a job well done so I can get the XP for his quest, even though I won't be progressing any further with the Legion, seeing how their next task is to kill my boss. While that may be a fantasy for some, I actually like mine, so he gets to live for now. Yeah. Next up is the Brotherhood of Steel. I use the codes to get into the base, which of course leads to the whole debacle with Dobson. I could have convinced him to leave, but I quickly decided bludgeoning him was a lot more fun, especially when he got stuck in the containers like so. I got a little too carried away however and his head exploded, but what can you do? Now that I had full access to the Brotherhood base, it was time to begin the next stage of my plan, ousting McNamara from power. As I already have the hollow tapes, this is as simple as talking with Ramos a few times, followed by dealing with an overly jumpy computer virus, and then relaying all that info to Harden. Once he's in charge, he will give you the final task to join the Brotherhood, which is to simply deal with the Van Graffs. And wait a minute, we already inadvertently did that, so congratulations, we can now wear power armour. That will be very important right now, as I steal the key cards and set the base to self-destruct. I attempted to fight some of them off with the rolling pin, and for what it's worth, it does work on the scribes and less armoured knights, but the paladins and their power armour? Well, their goss rifles wiped the floor with me within seconds. Next try and I just ignore most of them as I skip through the base. A few of them follow me outside, but they won't leave the confines of the fence around Hidden Valley, so I don't have to walk very far before they give up on trying to catch me. With that, I return to house and hand in all of the quests, now that I've already dealt with the Boomers, O-Murders and Brotherhood, and due to my positive rep with the NCR, thanks to helping them out earlier with the ant problem and giving them Prim, I am allowed to go and save the President. I immediately locate the Engineer and take the device to Grant, but rather than escort the President away immediately, they instead waited for the Legion spy to come out and watch the speech before attempting to apprehend him. On the bright side, me and a random ranger managed to hit him with the dual tech as I super slam him down and he finishes him off with a shotgun blast to the noggin. The day is saved, I return to house and do my stuff at the substation, and now it is time for the final encounter. The entire dam section, interior and otherwise, I just skipped past, not engaging any enemies along the way. I was afraid that my weapon's durability would run out before the legate. Yes, I do still have three rolling pins, but the legate also has a crazy amount of health, so I wanted to play things as safe as possible. 
So, the fight with the Legate was a war of attrition. Probably comes as no surprise. As soon as the fight begins, I pump myself full of Turbo, Psycho, and Medics. Not that any of them do very much for me right now, but every little helps. I made sure to get the Stonewall perk as well so he can't knock me down. This means I was essentially in control of the fight, as he for some reason does not have that perk, and can be knocked down with the Super Slam, just like anybody else. In other words, the fight was a lot of this. At the halfway point when he runs away, the most bizarre glitch happened. Like normal, I managed to knock him down, but in doing so, he flew past a couple of his men, who were just standing down due to the speech check. Well, for whatever reason, when he was getting back up, it flung them over to the camp entrance. Which, by the way, would be funny enough on its own, but then, one of them skyrocketed into the air, and was now walking in the sky. This is indeed a disturbing universe. After that craziness, I returned my attention to Lanius, and while he manages to get a few good hits in, I am once more able to knock him down, this time getting his foot stuck in the ground in the process, allowing me to just beat his ass into submission before he eventually gives up. All that leaves is the general, and while I try to do some damage, naturally House and Securitrons easily mop up what's left of them. I then talk with House, glitch out the slideshow, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas, with the rolling pin. As I suspected, this wasn't all that difficult, it's just more tedious than anything else, as you need to get to about level 12 before it starts doing any real damage. I am still curious what it will be like in Fallout 3 and 4, but those are videos for another day. Regardless, that's going to be the next challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving a video a like, if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to our videos every week. My name is Norbert, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.